What's up guys, Mike Lewis here and welcome to the Mike Lewis Podcast. If you guys want to keep up with me on social media, you can follow me on Instagram at Mike Lewis Official and you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Lou 52 It's where most of my updates come. If you're enjoying my content, give me a like and a subscribe. And without further ado, let's just dive right into this episode. Okay, Trishel, thanks for taking the time out and coming on today. How are we doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm uh, glad that my <laughs> constant pursuit finally paid off with you on uh, Twitter. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's crazy. Like, a lot of times I don't check my DMs for, like, a long time, and then I'll go back and I'll look at all of them, and I'm like, oh, crap. And then I saw you tweet me, so that actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was perfect timing, chatting with the rest of the uh, ladies that from, from your uh, real-world season. I yeah. was like... No, I think I really got to take a shot here, take a swing, and um, I'm glad we were able to uh, make this happen. So me thanks. too. Yeah, um, it's been a crazy past year and a half. Of course, you know we've had a pandemic, obviously, so much craziness. But it's so weird to me that in the midst of all that, we were still able to crank out an All Star show. Does it even feel <laughs> real that that happened? No, it's so crazy. Like I remember, because uh, that was before the vaccines and everything. Yeah. Um, well, before I got mine at least. Um, and so I had just gotten over COVID and it was crazy. Cause whenever they had asked me to do the show and I was talking to them, I was still, I was done with COVID, but I was still testing positive. And so they were like, look, like if you test positive, you cannot go like it, you know, you can't go on the show. We won't let you. So like, it's crazy. And then finally, like the week or two before I had like two negative tests, like back to back. So I was like, yay. But, um, yeah, it does not seem even possible that we were able to do that. <laughs> yeah. It just seemed like that. Just yeah. this finger. Were you ready to step back into that from both obviously with what was going on in the world, but also just stepping back into, uh, you know, the show? Well, I was super excited because how they originally pitched it to me, it was um, going to be more of like a reunion with like all your old friends. So I was like, OK, Mark Long, Katie, like, you know, um, uh, just a bunch of people that I wanted that I hadn't seen in forever, like Ruthie, Tech, whatever. And so I was super excited and I just didn't think it was going to be a real challenge. I kept asking. I was like, it's going to be super hard because like um you know, I don't go to the gym and I'm not like a CrossFitter or anything. And they were like, no, no, it's not going to be like a regular challenge. But they lied. <laughs> and so it was. And I was extremely surprised once I got there. What was your feelings on that? Because it seemed like they left everybody in the dark in a way, you know, like everybody was going to this thing expecting to make cookies and uh, build sandcastles. And then, you know, they're jumping off of semi trucks trying to retrieve uh, balls back and forth. Yeah, like, honestly, I was just, I was disappointed because I was, I wanted to be there just to have fun. And I literally was expecting, like, whenever we walked in, just like a, but like an open bar situation and like wine and cheese and that we were all just going to kind of like hang out and like talk. And I thought it was going to be more about the personalities on the show because I feel like the new challenges they lack personality. I'm sorry. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. They're just like athletic beings. And it's just like, okay, if I want to watch these kind of shows, then like, I'm going to like, just spend all my time watching the Olympics or whatever. I mean, I just find these people to be boring. Um, and I feel like our season, we were cast solely because of our personality, what we brought to the table, the drama that we created, the different people that meshed. So I thought it was going to be more of that. And I thought that we were going to talk about a lot of the current events happening in the world and like, you know, just things like that. There was a lot there that they could have talked about that we could have done. And so um, whenever it just ended up being a challenge, I was just like, oh, this sucks. But I mean, whatever. I know what to expect now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, for the most part, it seems like uh, all across the board, it was uh, received pretty good uh, ravings from, uh, you know, both audiences and people alike in terms of people enjoying the time there and experience. I mean, maybe you had a different perspective than some others, but. You know, no, I it, I thought it was like it was interesting to watch. My husband was like glued to it. He thought it was so hilarious. He loved all the people on the show. He thought it was so funny. Um, 
I give props to whoever the music person was on the show. The music was amazing. Like I want to download that freaking Spotify list, like of all the music. It was just so cool. And the editing was amazing. It was funny. Like they made it fun. And so it was like a lot of throwback stuff, which it ended up being a lot cooler to watch than like me being there. <laughs> No, I, I'm glad you pointed out the music because I found myself after the one episode uh, bumping to I Need a Hero more healthy than I probably should have been. But. <laughs> yeah, that was like really, really good music and everything. So, yeah, I liked it. But I heard that they're filming the new challenge right now. They are, yeah. And I've been told by several people that it's really boring. Well, not only that, I mean, spoiler alert. But there is apparently a uh, tornado of sorts, a hurricane of sorts that just went their way where they're filming. Oh, well, maybe that'll make things a little bit more interesting since the cast apparently has no personality. So like, maybe the hurricane will at least bring something to the table. I don't know. <laughs> this is just what I heard. Like, don't shoot the messenger. Yeah. No, but it seemed like if they were going to be pitching a show of All-Stars, right, where they have all these old-school personalities, I feel like you, in your case, it's almost like a shoe in right? I mean, you have to have you there. I mean, you're regarded in some cases as, like, one of the more iconic figures of real world, you know? When you think of lady personalities in the show, your name's almost synonymous with the word reality TV. Was Thank that you. A yeah, I mean, <laughs> was that a plan of yours to, um, once you stepped into that world, to kind of piggyback off of that and have all those opportunities, or did it just organically happen for you? Like in the beginning, you mean? Yeah, when you first went on the show, after done got done wrapping up, obviously, your Vegas season, was that your plan to continue to dip your toes in that entertainment world? I didn't have a plan. I was one of those, like, I went to college super early. I was still 17 for, like, almost an entire semester, my first semester. So I was young. And so, like, I I probably should have, like, waited a year to see what I wanted to do with my life first. But anyway, so I was kind of, I was pretty young when I went on the show, too. And then I didn't really have a plan. I had only three classes left till I graduated college. And I put that on hold for, like, eight years until I went back. Um, but so I guess w I didn't know what I wanted to do until the show started airing. And then I saw people's reaction and it was very negative. Honestly, they were just like, she's a whore. She's terrible. And, you know, the, you know, all it was so negative that I was just like, well, screw these people. I'm going to do something with this. I'm going to prove them wrong. That's just how my attitude is. Like, I'm going to prove them wrong. So I just started to, I got an agent, I got a manager started taking acting classes actually kind of did a little bit of that but then mostly I was getting reality offers and so I just did a bunch of shows after that and uh but I did negotiate some of my contracts myself um I did have a manager he was actually Steve-O and the manager for a lot of the jackass people and so like I, I went on tour with them uh I don't know I, I did a lot of fun things and so I guess it's just sort of like Okay, hang on one second. My dog needs to go out. I guess it's just sort of like I had to like prove them wrong. I just had a lot of offers and I was surprised and shocked by by that. I didn't think that I was like that uh, interesting, to be honest. Yeah. And you mentioned about the negative reactions. Is, is that maybe what influenced you in some cases to want to do All Stars to kind of maybe in a way uh, maybe shift whoever had negative thoughts on you from your first stint or did that not cross your mind? No, it didn't cross my mind at all. Just because I had been out of the scene for so long and um, I kind of just didn't care. Like, I don't care anymore what people think about me at, at all. Like, literally at all. Sometimes I'll just get on, like, Twitter fights if someone says something just because I'm bored. But, like, I, I honestly don't care what these people think. <laughs> and that's the great thing about age. Like, with age, you just don't give a shit anymore. So, uh, no, I, did, I solely did All-Stars just to see my old friends and because I thought it was going to be a fun, easy get-together with people and it ended up being, like, a hardcore challenge. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was joking about it with uh, Arissa when I had her on last week. We were talking about her Vegas season, of course, or your guys' Vegas season. And I was telling her about how when I had prior guests on, I'm like, yeah, you know, real world Austin's pretty cool. And then I was like, hearing all this Vegas chatter, I was like, I have to go back and rewatch. And uh, <laughs> I owe you guys an apology because about five minutes into it, I was like, 
this is nuts. <laughs> like, I think it's probably now my favorite real world if it wasn't before. So. Yeah, thank you. It was so much fun. And, you know, I think a lot of people, um, they're like, oh, like the Vegas cast, they're just, they expect so much. But, okay, so I had said this actually in response to, like, people on Twitter. Like, uh, I think Darrell, and I loved, love, love Darrell. But he said something about me at Reunion. I think it uh, was, he said, like, oh, Trisha, like, wanted to quit every five seconds. Well, here's the thing. Arissa and Alton and I come from a place where we were so spoiled on our season. We lived in a casino and like a high rise. We had like pretty much everything that we wanted there. We had bars, we had like clubs, nice restaurants, a bunch of people, a casino. It was so fun. It was the bougiest season ever. And whenever I go on a challenge and I haven't been to one in a long time, I'm just like, this sucks. I want my cell phone. Like I, I want music. Uh, like there's cheap you know, wine, I mean, I am drinking 5.99 wine, but still. Um, I just like thought it was just, I don't know, people think that I'm bratty and I kind of am, but it's because we come from a different place. We're not like living like Darrell on road rules and all those people like, they were grateful to be in a challenge house. They were living in a, an RV. Yeah. I was gonna ask you now because since Vegas is obviously regarded very highly, when I think of real world seasons that are regarded highly, I think of you guys and then Seattle are kind of like the two that stand out, you know, mm -hmm. like they stack up, but for two different reasons. Like Seattle's obviously re regarded as like a darker season with like what transpired. And then you guys was like, wow, like lights, glamour, like this is crazy. Do you feel like your season is what really shifted the uh, turn in real world and kind of the direction in which it was going in? Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we were blamed for like a lot of the people like starting to like go with their character and start to act on the show and things like that. And but, um, you know, whenever we missed that social media jump, like right from our show, like that was before like Twitter, Instagram, all this stuff, like we would have been huge influencers after our show. We would have millions of followers if that were the case. So like we kind of got like shafted a little bit on that aspect. But I think people saw that we were like in Us Weekly and we were in like, you know, the gossip magazines and the New York Post and things like that. And people saw that we were getting press. So the cast members after were like trying to recreate like what we did, I think. Yeah. And, and not to play devil's advocate here, but because obviously I enjoyed like tons of the real world seasons after you guys. Yeah. But I think like the next time that we saw something similar to you guys was probably the Jersey Shore. And I can't say that, you know, maybe thought bias being mm. from the yeah. But I think like in a way, they were like the Jersey version of what you guys were doing in Las Vegas in a way. Do you think that there's any like correlation there or I do. And I met a lot of the cast members from the Jersey Shore and I absolutely love them. I thought they were like brilliant for television. Like uh, um they couldn't have ca had a better cast like really. Um yeah, I mean, I kind of see that, you know, they just partied so hard and they had like all, some of them were just friends, some of them hooked up. Like it it was, I, I can see that correlation. Yeah, like had you guys, hypothetically, your season took place in 09 or 2010, mm -hmm. whenever they did, it probably have been the same thing with like how many, uh, you know, millions of followers and like all that stuff, you know? Yeah, and, like, we actually did get to do the reunion show, like, in 2006. But, honestly, I think it was too soon after our show aired because, like, we didn't – I mean, we were still, a lot of us, living in Los Angeles and, you know, kind of doing the same things, I guess. And so, um, yeah, I mean, it was just – it was too soon. So, hopefully, they will let us do, like, a homecoming show now because everyone's so different. Yeah. How how come you guys did have that reunion so soon? Because I did see that, too, and I was like, five years? Well, eh. I know. They wanted to do a reunion, and I believe that they did something like people voted on MTV.com or something. And um, and I, I think it was something like that, and then I think it was down to, like, us and the Austin cast, maybe, to, to do the reunion. Or was it Austin? I don't remember, but that, maybe not. I don't remember. Uh, it was us and somebody else. But they chose they chose us, and I thought it was fun, you know, but, like, we were all doing the same thing. 
Yeah, and now if a homecoming were to take place, this would probably be like your third time reuniting or something like that, right? Yeah. I mean, we did a reuniting like off camera like a couple of years ago, just like for fun in Vegas, but like not everybody was there. Steven wasn't there and Allison wasn't there. But, um, you know, my husband got to meet like Frank, Arissa, Erlon, and Bryn, and that was fun. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and a big thing from uh, your earlier seasons of the challenge before obviously you stepped away for a bit and came on to battle of the seasons was kind of like your two season uh, feud with Coral. I want to ask maybe what <laughs> <laughs> what what caused that maybe clashing of personalities and was Coral like as intimidating in person as she comes across on screen? Uh, yeah, I, I would say that Coral's pretty intimidating. However, I at that time, actually, probably now, too, I just don't take shit. I don't care. Like, what's she going to do? Punch me? Cool. Like, punch me. I'm going to hit you back. Or you're going to go home. Whatever. And so, like, I wasn't really that scared of her. At first, maybe I was. But she had placed this, like, claim on Mike, the Miz. Yeah. And she didn't like it whenever you know, he and I started dating and like, you know, he was taking my side a little bit with things and the challenge. And she felt like, you know, some, I had like overstepped on her territory, I guess. And so she didn't like that. And, you know, that's where it, that's where like, I think the beginning of like our fights came and then it kind of just escalated from there. Uh, we just didn't really get along. Now, I, I, I haven't talked to her in forever. I mean, hope to God that she's not still feeling that way because that would be pathetic, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking about this too when I was you know, talking about this question. It almost makes sense for you two to kind of clash, right? Because when I think of the two most recognizable lady figures in real yeah. world history, yourself and Coral are the two that come to mind, right? And you both have, like, this aura to you, but an aura in, like, a different way. Coral has that aura of, like, a badass, Bad like... bitch. <laughs> you're, like, the, the glamour, kind of flashy. So it almost yeah. makes sense that you two would butt heads, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. And whenever I think of, like, who the most recognizable female in the franchise is, I always think that it's Coral. Yeah. To me, to me, she is, like, the standout of everyone and that's actually whenever we did the all-stars I was just like how is Coral not on this cast but I think that she you know I think she wanted more money and maybe she couldn't get off work but like uh yeah the, they it, this is not an all-stars cast unless Coral's there to me yeah she's was like there any, yeah was there anybody else you felt was an, an omission from the cast yeah I thought that a lot of road rules guys that I really liked um Old school, like Adam Larson, he was on Katie's season. I, I lo actually liked all the people in Katie's season, um, Katie Doyle, um, yeah. on her road rules, and Hosella was there too. Um, I liked Adam. Blair was a good one. Tim Beggy was uh, excellent on road rules. He is the funniest person in the entire world. Um, like a lot of those old, like, people like that. Um, I mean... Like, and I love John A and like Jimmy and all those people, but like they, I think that it should have been like way older people for it to be all stars. I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy and John A are still young. Like they could still compete on like the new challenges. <laughs> J Jimmy's last time on the main challenge, I think was in 2018. So it wasn't that big of a removal. Yeah, right. Um, mm -hmm. I think maybe they just needed her to stir a little bit of the like drama in the house, which she's great at. And so I was glad she was there. Trust me. Well, well, she said that, I think she said on Twitter that she was replacing Tina at the last second. Yeah. Yeah. I remember because I was in the new Orleans airport and <laughs> all of a sudden she had tried to call me like the day before. And I was just like packing and in a frazzle state. And like, uh, I saw her in the airport and I was just like, what the hell are you doing here? She's like, I'm on a challenge, bitch. Like, <laughs> Yelling in the airport, everyone's looking. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> they, they, they needed their big personality, and I can't, oh, she's can't so disagree funny. with that move. Yeah, agreed, agreed. She's the f most fun. So you obviously had that big layoff, and then you came back on Battle of the Seasons. How different of a vibe and atmosphere was it for you coming into that? Because if I had to make any comparison, it's almost like, you know, when you're chaperoning a homecoming, that's kind of like the vibe I got, you know? like you so mean, oh, 
Battle on the sea. Okay, yes, and Chet, Chet said that I was like that um, hot aunt or hot mom or something. He made some comment about me being old, and I was like, oh, my God. Um, yeah, I was the oldest female there in the house. Um, it, okay, it's so funny because for some reason at that time, I thought that I was just like a bad bitch. Like I was just like, I'm going to run this house and like, I don't care these kids, like what they're going to say or whatever. And, um, I mean, physically I was in good shape, even though I hadn't like ran over like probably two laps around like a block and like forever. But that's like, I was like what 30 or something like that or 31, 32, I could still just pick up and go. So when I went there, I wasn't even nervous at all. I just kind of like start, I just hit the ground running. And I think my attitude going in there was what helped me get to the final. Yeah, and for all intents and purposes, coming into Battle of the Seasons, obviously, you know, with you and Alton being on like such a well-recognized and reviewed season in real world, did you guys feel like in a way everybody was kind of like looking at you guys, you know, because there were so many rookies and like unknowns on that season in a way, you know, just kind of getting their feet wet in the challenge. And then you guys kind of make that big return after like a layoff. Did, is that kind of like the vibe you got? Um, a little, but we were lucky because like when um, Fresh Meat and them came in later on, uh, well, not later on, sorry, they came in as like a replacement. Uh, because I believe it was supposed to be Kellyanne. Sydney. Oh, Sydney. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So anyway, they were supposed to get on and then Fresh Meat came in. So I think everyone already was just like, they're going to be the first people that we're going to target. Right. Um, and so it was kind of easy to like, we, we had people that were like below us on the totem pole, but not having Nani and Dustin on our team because they were still like friends with everyone and, you know, doing the challenges or whatever that helped us a lot. Because if it was, like, me, Alton, Frank, and, like, you know, Arissa or anybody else from our season, they probably would have picked off the old people. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. That whole Sydney situation was so weird. Um, I've actually had Kellyanne and uh, Isaac from that season both came on here and told told the story as to, like, what happened. And it still just doesn't really add up. I don't know if, you know, you've ever heard of it. Okay. All I know is that we were all on a bus. And then all of a sudden, they called them to get off the bus. And we were, like in turkey and then they left like what what did T kellyanne tell you because I, I don't really know what happened so so they pulled them all in a room and they told them that one of them has a medical condition and that they can't compete on the season and it turned out to be isaac and isaac said that when he made it back into the states he went to that doctor that they said that he couldn't compete and the doctor said well we never told them that so still to this day, we have no clue as to why or how that happened. But the theory is that it was to get Cara Maria and Camilla on the season because they were like up and coming. Uh, oh, yeah. But I feel like they could have still done that a different way. But, you know, if Sydney was on it, we would have been in trouble like because they, they were good players. Yeah, they, they they were probably the shoe ins to win had they been yeah, on it. Yeah, they would have dominated. So, yeah, I'm glad that they weren't there. We were actually, when, <laughs> whenever we found out that they weren't going to be coming back, we were like, thank God. Everyone was like, they would have won the whole thing, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you, what was the deal with uh, Team Vegas? Because I've heard that there was supposed to be an original Team Vegas and yeah. a new school Vegas. Um, Arissa told me that her and Frank both, you know, would have been down for it. And then I think for one reason or another, um, the newer school Vegas couldn't have like two of their players for some reason. And then that's why they combined. Yeah, it was something like that. Um, <clears throat> I would have loved it for us to just, you know, be like a bunch of people from my cast, but um, it just ended up working the other way. But it was kind of weird because... <clears throat> I think people thought that it would be like me and Alton working together and Nani and Dustin, but it was not. It was just like me and Nani and Alton and Dustin, and they were like really hard to work with, like really hard. Yeah. Some of my followers wanted to know, do you still keep up with Nani? Uh, I keep up with her as far as social media. Um, apparently she's dating Casey now, so they look yeah. cute together and they look really happy, so I'm happy for her. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, there was like no hard feelings after the show as far as like whenever Nani went in. Um, that whole thing, a lot of people were like, you screwed over Nani. And I, I, I realized that, but this is also a game. And like if everyone played the game to be a nice person and to not piss off other people, then there would be no fucking show. So th- you're welcome for giving you a show. <laughs> I'm not going to ever play the game with a thousand percent, a hundred percent integrity because that's just not how the game is supposed to be played. It's not how it's meant to be played. Yeah. I think like my fa- one of my favorite dynamics amongst team members was yours with Dustin. I'm sorry, like that was so funny. <laughs> and I and I love Dustin. I've actually had the chance to hang out with him a few times. <laughs> really? Oh God. He hated me. Yeah, him and I we golfed uh, earlier this year. He, he's actually pretty good, but um he's been on here quite a few times he's um he's a ball to hang out with so what was your dynamic with him was because it seemed like you guys would argue but then you worked together so well in the final and I think he said that you two even caught up in uh New Orleans after the season were and we're fine with each other yeah I mean we were fine and I really loved him it's it was like a big sister little brother relationship is what it was and like um we would fight and I mean he was very upset about the Nani thing Dustin has a huge huge heart like the biggest heart he's such a kind person and people don't really know that like he's emotional and I think that he was trying to play the game with like too much emotion and I was stoic like I was just like there to win and that was my mentality going in and um he like I I don't think I cried I don't I probably couldn't wouldn't have cried if I tried to make myself like I couldn't have (laughs) I was just like a freaking ice queen and like he was very emotional a lot I think he cried a couple times I was just like what's happening like you need to stop that this is crazy um but I remember when Nani you know went in and they went home he was so mad at me he did he wanted to quit and Chet yeah. and them were trying to talk him out of it. And, like, it was insane. I was just like, we made it this far. Are you kidding me? Like, we do work well together. But in the final, I could not have done it without him. And I think that I really pushed him, too. Because there was a couple times whenever we were in that desert that he wanted to quit. And I was dragging him by his backpack, too. Like, we helped each other. Yeah. So, um, Yeah. That had to have been one of the funniest fights that you witnessed, though, with him and Frank, like, in person on a show. I was actually <laughs> scared. I'm not kidding you. I was, like, really afraid that, like, it. the, the name-calling itself was funny, but, <laughs> like, especially looking back on it, because I watched it, like, a few years ago, and I was like, oh, my God, that's terrible, like, the stuff they were saying to each other. But, like, I was scared that they, one of them would have to go home. And so, like, because of his surprised that Dustin, because Dustin, I think, I know. actually he slapped him, mushed, mushed him or something like that in the face. Yeah, I'm surprised, too. But like, you know, they wanted the drama and everything. And it, But I love Frank, too. But he was instigating the whole time. He was picking, picking, picking at Alton and Dustin. And they would they would literally try to eat their lunches and dinners away from like Frank and them. And Frank and them would purposefully go and sit closer to them so that they could, you know, you know, say things to them and make comments to where they would hear. And you could only take so much. Yeah. And uh, Dustin seemed to agree with this next question that I'm going to ask you, because you'd probably know better than anyone else. What is, because this is the big urban legend, everybody seems to believe that there is a chance that Alton threw that elimination on Battle yeah. List. Was, was that true, do you think? I think he did. Yes, I, I'm. I'm. Sh- did Dustin think he didn't? He Dustin said he didn't. He did. He said he did. Oh, he did. He did. Yeah, he threw it. He was ready to go home. Alton was just completely over it. Alton did not want to be involved in like the nastiness of the house. He was just like once he felt like the house was like <clears throat> negative and going in a negative direction and all the the fights and everything. He was he completely shut off, and he told us like several times that he wanted that he was going to throw it that's why i didn't want to go in with him wow you guys probably win if he doesn't throw that and he has his head in the game right yeah but you know what and part of the game a huge part of the game is mental and frank's strategy was to break alton down and frank later told me that he was just like i did it and i'm like good job you guys won first place i mean honestly it's it's part of the strategy is to mentally wear and tear people 
Wow, we could have seen you as a uh, challenge champ. I know, that, that would have been so cool. People are just like, she sucks, she quits, blah, blah, blah. Because I left with the, with the following challenge, but it's like, come on, like the first challenge I ever did, I tried so hard, I almost killed myself on a mountain bike, and then I still tried to compete. And then the Battle of Seasons, like I did okay, so whatever. Yeah, what, what was the tea on Rivals 2 and that whole experience and what maybe prompted you to leave? I've heard some mixed things. Obviously, they tried to make it seem like the Anissa situation was why, um, but there seemed to be more underlying stuff that maybe prompted you to it wasn't. Leave. It wasn't only because of the Anissa situation, honestly. Like, that was like the, the tipping point, I think. Um, before, I, I was... I cut my foot the very first night that I was there and I was pissed off because freaking CT and like somebody got into like a fight, like a, phys like a physical fight, which by the way, nobody went home again and um, they broke glass by the pool. So I was swimming in the pool and I cut my foot so bad that like I was kind of near the water and I heard my foot crunch. Like it was just like a nasty, nasty. I had to pull a piece of glass and I forget who it was that was on that season. Somebody was like helping me, like got it. They got a dirty towel, put it on my bleeding foot. You know, we were in Thailand. It's not like, you know, you, you're, we're in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, where are we going to get medical attention? So I asked for it that night. They were like, you're fine. You're fine. We'll put a butterfly band aid. Woke up the next morning. There was blood all over my bed. I'm like, what the hell? My foot started to get infected. Long story short, I got an infection. I had to go to the hospital, get a shot, tetanus shot, everything. So I was on antibiotics and uh, they told me you, you can't drink and don't go into water. So like for 10 days, I was like not drinking on the challenge while well, everyone was partying. I was laid up. I could barely walk on my foot. It wasn't fun. And then they try to get me to do a challenge over water. And I was like, and I was telling um, Justin Booth, I was just like, I can't do it. Like, he was just like, well, just don't fall into the water. I'm like, yeah, but like that, obviously that's the point of the challenge. But what if I do? Like, I don't want to get like my foot, I don't want my foot to come off. And he was like, oh my God. Like, he was like, you're being dramatic. <laughs> so anyway, maybe I was being a little dramatic, but I was scared that it would get worse. So anyway, got in a huge fight with him, like a huge fight with him, got in a huge fight. Like I was just like at my last rope. So the very last night that I was there, I finally, I was off of my antibiotics. Like the very first day I was like, oh, I'm going to get drunk tonight. So I got shit face, obviously. Like I could not even form a sentence. And then that's when the whole thing happened with Anissa. But Jimmy, uh, and I love her. She's my friend. She still admitted it. She was like the person who stirred the pot on that one. Because, like I said, a mental game, she wanted us to go at it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, long story short, like, I was pissed because I, the medical, lack of medical care, it took me, took them days to get me to a doctor. Maybe they didn't know how bad it was, but I knew how I was feeling. That was, like, really 80% of it. 20% of it was that once the argument with Anissa happened, I was just like, why am I here? Like, I'm not having fun. Did that rub you the wrong way at all, that the edit made it look like that was why you were leaving was solely because of, you know, the Anissa situation? Yes, it completely killed me because then people were like, she's a racist, she's this, you know, she's that. Like, they, it, it just was so horrible. And, like, later on, Anissa and I had talked about it, obviously, and, like, way later. And um, she was just like... I, I knew that like what you said was just like because you thought we were like friends and we were all we were joking around and it was whatever. But like if it hurt and I asked her, did it hurt your feelings? She's like, it did. And I was like, well, then if it hurt your feelings, it's not cool. So then I, you know, apologized and everything like that. But yeah, it killed me that that's the edit was just that. But then again, it's like, how are they going to edit it for viewers? They're going to be like, oh, Trishel cut her foot because of a fight that we didn't air and we didn't get her medical attention. Like they yeah. can't really show that. So I understood why it happened the way it did. Did any of the confrontation with CT play a part in your experience and why you wanted to leave too? Oh, oh yes. That's another thing. I was just like, these guys are freaking huge. They're fighting like in front of us girls. People are getting like pushed out of the way by act like during the fight. I just didn't feel like, I felt like they were animals. Like I, I just felt like it the house, the kitchen was too small. 
for us all to be in whenever people were fighting felt like everyone was just acting kind of crazy and I was over it. Like it was a completely different experience. Like whenever Frank and Steven were fighting and everything, it was like out in the open. <laughs> so like, and there were places to get away in that house. I felt like the one in Thailand, it was just like more dangerous. Like you couldn't get away. No. Yeah, for sure. What, what about, um, you and Sarah, do you feel like you got to know her more? Um, maybe on that sh challenge than you did beforehand? No, <laughs> no. Um, Sarah and I just have completely different personalities. And I love, I love Sarah. I really do. I think she's amazing. And she has the personality that my husband has. Like, honestly, I told him, I was like, if you ever met her, like you guys would be best friends. They're like, poly positive. Like, I'm, you know, this is going to be the best day ever. And this challenge is great. And like, yes, I love to throw myself off of like a cliff that's like thousands of feet in the air. They don't care. Like they're those types of people. I'm more of the school of like, this sucks. This chicken is not cooked. This shit is stupid. Why don't we have our phones? Like I'm a complainer. And so Sarah and I are just different like that. But like, so she, her positivity annoyed me constantly. I was just like, this just just tell me that this sucks. Just be with me in this and just, let's just say that it sucks and then we can get over it after. <laughs> and like I just don't yeah, I don't really get along with people that are like super always positive because it seems like phony to me almost. Yeah. Well, so then it makes sense that you guys be right. <laughs> yeah, and and then with her and Alton's relationship, I was trying to get her out the whole time, but it wasn't only because of her and Alton, it's because like she is a great competitor. She's good at everything. And so I, of course, I didn't want her like in battle of seasons, but you know what, if I could have just not been such a puss and rivals too, and like, I just like stuck it out and stayed there, Sarah and I could have been a really good team. Yeah. I, I think you guys probably could have made the final. Yeah. Th I think the only thing would have been like me taking time away from her and her niceness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So were you getting any more calls for the main show after that season or did they stop once you had that little, um, Oh no, they called. Really? They, yeah, they called. Uh, but I was just so, I had like freaking PTSD from that sh from that season, honestly, because I got so much hate from it. Um, but then after that I was doing more like poker stuff and then I, um, what was I doing? Oh, yeah, I, I had, like, moved to Montreal, and I was just kind of over it. I didn't want to do another show. Yeah, that'll be a good segue into this point, since you mentioned about hate. Have you experienced any, you know, anxiety or mental health bouts post any of your shows, maybe from negativity online from fans or just in general? Okay, so this is interesting. No, I never... I don't think that I did. Not that I had to, like seek help or anything what I did was just throw myself into other shows and like <clears throat> I did something where like for my sh first show how everyone was calling me a whore and all these uh, horrible names um I whenever they asked me to do po post for playboy uh I was conflicted but then I ended up saying yes because I was like well everybody already thinks I'm a slut you know I may as well post for playboy then I can be like making some money off of it so I kind of like geared my myself toward that when if I was never called these names and never hated on so much personally I probably would have never ever ever post for Playboy just because it's something that my family was very upset about and just my like I wasn't really brought up with the values that that was something that I could do um even though now I feel completely different but back then so I kind of like started to do that I, I guess act out in a way that was not who I was before. And it changed me. It changed my personality. It made me like a lot more tough and hard. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but like, I mean, uh, when I first got into the show, I was like this innocent, naive girl that wanted to get married and have kids. I mean, then fast forward, I'm just like partying in LA, doing a bunch of shows, like, you know, going back and forth from New York to LA, like, date a guy for three months and be like, mm, I don't like you anymore. Didn't really have feelings at all. Like it's crazy. And then, you know, I got married later on in life. I thought I would get married when I was like 24 and wow. have 
have babies. Like I thought that was what I was going to do. So the show made me harder. Like if I, you know, emotionally, so um, yeah. you pretty much embraced it then is what you're trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I did. I, I yeah. But then the crazy thing is, uh, the, the show that I left on rivals Two, uh, I kind of backed away a little bit, but I didn't like need mental health help or anything. But the last show that I did, the Challenge All Stars, when I got back, I needed a therapist. I hid, I hold myself up for like two weeks in my room. My husband was super worried about me. My friends were like, "What's going on with her?" Everybody was very concerned about me, and I, I can't even tell you what it was. I, I'm not sure, but like I, I talked to a therapist. I had therapy like twice a week, like on Zoom. I, I was just completely messed up. Um, I don't know why. I think maybe just being thrown back in that position. Um, but now I'm fine. I, I could do another show tomorrow and I'd be fine. Oh, that's good then. <laughs> I bounce back very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about the current direction of the uh, main show? You mentioned in the beginning. I want to ask you more in depthly now because you, you'll be a good person to ask this question question too because you know you're definitely one to not shy away from voicing your opinion but also because you did kind of uh clap back at lolo jones's claim back in mm. the spring about you know m reality stars this is all they have is the challenge and none of them do anything else so mm -hmm. what do you think about this new direction that they're in with kind of gearing towards casting athletes but also people with maybe less personality and maybe aiming to get people with Instagram followings, in a way, is what they're kind of gearing towards now? I think it's a complete waste of money, and whoever does their budget sucks. Because, like, to me, you can have people, like, that have a, a huge personality that make a show, and literally, you could be doing challenges where you're holding an egg on a spoon and running back and forth. But it's what happens back at the house and the dynamics between the cast that makes the show. You don't need these multi, multi million dollar productions to make the cast look like they're better than what they are. So Lolo Jones, in my opinion, her personality sucks. Like she's so, she's like not, she has zero personality, nothing to bring to the table. And then the constant complaining on Twitter about production, like whatever, shut up. Um, I mean, it, to me, I'm, it's like you have to pay these people more because they have this following and everything. And then they're beefing up the whole like uh, aspect of production. They have like Hollywood people that are working on a challenge. And to me, it's stupid. Look at Big Brother. They do backyard games. And because the casting is so good, it makes for a, an amazing TV show. Buna Murray, in my opinion, has hundreds of people that have they have dedicated months and months and months to casting this this one person for this this other like seven people in one house six people on road rules they already know that we have dynamic personalities i think that they can just use that pool of people it doesn't have to be like olympic athletes like who cares like oh okay great like lolo jones is good at hurdles we're gonna give her a thing where she has to jump shocker she did great on it like i mean this is just so that's why i don't even watch the new shows i just find it so predictable boring next like well, well i've got a stat for you so okay. th this season that's currently airing there are two episodes in it's season 37 they have their lowest rating since season 27 um and my perspective on this is with currently how they're casting they're spending a lot of money seeking out people that pretty much the payoff isn't there you could go and find people that you're casting at any gold's gym in America. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I agree. I completely for less agree. Money, for less money. And they might have more of a personality than the, uh, you know, person with the 100,000 Instagram followers. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't care about followings. And I think, like, I think they're overcompensating by in hopes of casting these people. They think that their Instagram followers are going to come over to the show just because someone they follow is on it. But that's just not how it works. That's not have, how it works. If you don't have all. a personality or character development, nobody's going to care what show you're on, you know? Okay, where do you meet more interesting people? 
at a CrossFit camp or at a bar on Bourbon Street. Like, I mean, you are not going to find like people that are working out all day long. Like, that's why I hate like I I couldn't do the new challenges. When I see people working out, I'm like, really? Like, give me a cocktail by a pool. Let me talk shit about everybody here. Like, I just want to like gossip and like be, you know, a little bit shady and like do my thing. And I I think that's more interesting and fun for TV. I don't think like this whole like monster, like, like people, that's just not cute. It's not. I just think TJ calling himself the handler and not the host is just pretty much the perfect personification of what the challenge is. What's the handler? Wait, I don't, I don't watch. So what's the deal with that? I'm curious what a handler is too, but that's what they call him now. They don't call him the host. (laughs) They call him the handler. Why? Like, what is that supposed to be? That's like this. It's like supposed to be some spy theme. That's what they've done the last two seasons. Uh It's like, it's ridiculous. Riveting. Yeah. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I think that, um, and I'm obviously glad and grateful that All Stars is here, but I think that their lack thereof production of the main show is what's prompted them to install All Stars. To do a spinoff, right. See, and I think that the first All Stars cast was so, was really good, even though there, we were missing pe- like key people like Coral, you know, and oh, Veronica too. I think Veronica's a really, really big personality. Um, but... There are people like Hisella, who I remember I really loved her on Road Rules, and I forgot how awesome she was. And then she came back on All Stars, and to me, she was like the biggest standout of the show. Yeah. Just, just my opinion, just from her, her showings with like some of the challenges and her abilities, like it was insane. She tried so hard, and also she gave the best interviews. She was so good. She was hilarious. Um, so I, I like people like that, and. I just think that, yes, All Stars is something that I think they needed to do. But it's still sad that, like, the ch- like it had to be on Par- Paramount Plus and not MTV. But they get- then again, you're talking about MTV, a network that shows reruns of ridiculousness, like, all day. No one gives a shit about that show. Like, why? MTV needs to be just, like, they need to, like, revamp the entire programming. I don't know. I, do you do you have any idea as to why ridiculousness is the only thing? Shown? I don't know. Like I wish to God I could get an answer on that. I have no clue. Maybe Rob Deerdick or whoever his name is has something really nasty on someone who is the president of programming. I have no clue. <laughs> you might end up on Rivals Four with Rob Deerdick by the time this is out. <laughs> that is his last name, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's really funny. I have a funny story about him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. He um he used to live whenever we lived in uh, L.A. He used to live next door. I'm pretty sure it was Ryan Cabrera's house that we were at, and he they he he lived next door. I'm like almost positive it was Cabrera. And then we were over at Cabrera's house for a party, and uh one of our girlfriends who was my old roommate i'm not gonna say her name (laughs) this is embarrassing she got drunk and she found out that he lived next door rob did and she was just like i'm gonna go try to hook up with him and so she was like climbing like a fence to like try to drop in to like his backyard to like go to his house and and just announce that she went to hook up with him (laughs) Nothing ever came of it, but anyway, I just thought that was hilarious. We were like, don't climb the fence. Like, come back over here. It's just funny. It just, <laughs> made me, it just made me think of this, like, random L.A. story. <laughs> <laughs> so you obviously got the All-Stars call. Was there any hesitation or, or like, or was it, like, a surefire I'm going? There was hesitation, yeah. Um, I talked to Mark Long about it before I even got the call, and... Mark and I have been friends for years and I love him. Like literally uh, we've been friends for a very long time. He has never done anything bad, shady, negative. He is just like the funniest, coolest guy. Like I I just adore him. So anyway, I was just like, okay, I trust him, right? Like I trust that that's going to be good. So he was like, uh, just want to let you know, like, I'm not in control. He's like, I'm just trying to get some cast together to help out. He's like, I'm not control of, in control of what's going on on the show because he was also going to be cast. So, like, they cut him off at some point with information. So, whenever they called me and they were just like, oh, okay, you've been officially invited, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay. So, like, and I kept asking them, 
is it going to be a hard challenge? Like I asked them a million times and they kept being like, no, no, we would never do that to you, Trisha. <laughs> So now I know better whenever they're doing, whenever they call me for the second challenge, I was just like the, the all stars one. I was like, okay, well I'm going to need like a lot of money because I'm not just going to go there for pennies and like risk getting hurt and whatever. So I ended up saying no. So, so that's why you're not currently filming. They wouldn't pay up. It's all about the money, Mike. I, I mean, I don't, to be honest, and I'm not going to, Yes, I'm going to sound like a bitch, but I don't need the money. I don't. And so, like, you're going to have to make it worth my while somehow. And so, like, just don't insult me with your number, like, for me. And I'm kind of like, okay. I was a little insulted by, by the – so, yeah, I, I didn't – I didn't. But, but I did want to do the show. It's just that I, I thought that the number was not fitting to what it should be. Well, I definitely think that in some regard they should pony up for the more, I guess you could say, sought after cast members, you know, like if Johnny Bananas can get six figures to hop on a plane to go to Argentina for a main challenge, I don't see why not pony up for the all-star people. Right. I agree. And I, but I see why Johnny Bananas is worth what he is. Like he brings a lot and he does a lot. But, um, but yeah, like I, I to me, tech I think Tech is like a huge household name. Like whenever I saw him on Challenge All Stars, like the the first season, I was like starstruck. I mean, Tech is amazing. He's like larger than life to me. So, um, I mean, I thought he deserved more for season two, but I mean, maybe that's why season two is so boring because they they think that they're just gonna like get the mediocre cast and pay them mediocre money. Well, you're gonna have a mediocre show. That's what's gonna happen. Well, time will tell. <laughs> I also don't think that everyone should be paid the same. And people have argued about that. And you know who argues about that is people who suck at television. <laughs> <laughs> people are like, no, everyone should be paid the same. I'm like, you're only saying that because you bring nothing to the table. Like, yeah, no, I, I think there are people that I think need to be paid more than me. Yeah, who, like tech. Who, tech should, who, is there anybody uh, else? I think tech, I think Coral, I think Anissa, I think uh, maybe, maybe even Veronica. I just think that there are some people that if they want like bad enough that they should be paid more than me for All-Stars. Now, obviously, Johnny and CT, they never even do All-Stars probably just because they're doing the main challenges and making so much more money. Well, CT's still winning them, so. Yeah, I mean, like he doesn't have to do All-Stars. Like he is killing the kids and those and that's amazing. It's impressive, I gotta say. It is. And by the way, I will say, I've talked a lot of shit about CT in the past, but I saw a picture of him recently. He looks incredible. Like, he has not aged. Dr drop the workout routine. I think he's probably lost about 100 pounds in the last, like, eight months. I think he looks better than he ever did. Honestly, his face, he looks younger. He's like Benjamin, Benjamin Button. <laughs> looks like how he did uh, on Rivals 2. Yeah, he looks, yeah, he looks good. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just think that I, I, this is just my opinion. I mean, I just think that they should pay people what they think are worth. Have everyone sign NDAs. Don't discuss your pay and call it a day. Yeah. Do you think they aim to get as much Vegas people on the all-stars as possible with, uh, since it was the first one, they're trying to market it. Cause I've looked at, it, I was like three of them. That's a lot from one season. That, is, that was a lot. But then again, like Arissa and I had kind of a weird relationship with Alton. So it's almost like Alton's kind of doing his own thing. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. They, I'm not sure about that. Um, I think it was a smart move, I guess. But I don't know. It would have been different if like Frank or Steven were there because then we would have had a solid like three and it would have been like more... It, it would we would have been tighter. Alton always removes himself from people. Yeah, it did seem like you guys were a little uh, distant. Is was that the case going into this thing? Yeah, because he makes himself distant. I love Alton, and I really want to be close to him. But you know, he he doesn't. He's hard to get close to. So yeah, I don't know. Doesn't mean that I like love him less. And it kind of seems like he's lost that fire in a way, right? Like, he could obviously still perform, but he just doesn't have that same, like, maybe desire as he once did to yeah. uh, 
really smoke people in competitions or like you know climb stuff like I, I just feel like he hasn't had that competitive fire it's true and you know I think it was Anissa that was telling me this and she was just like whenever she's like you can always tell the people who are going to do well by the attitude that they come in with and that's so true because I was telling you about Battle of Seasons how I went in and I was like excited and I made I made my mind up that I was going to go far and then well, when I went to All Stars, I was so taken aback by like the first challenge that I completely shut down and I wouldn't even like allow myself to do well. It's almost like a self fulfilling prophecy. Like, you know, you just, you kind of like put it out there and it's yeah. that negative energy. So if I do another show, I'm going to make sure I am like mentally there and I'm going to like be like, I'm going to win the shit and I'm going to kill it. <laughs> So we're obviously months removed from All Stars playing out. So I want to ask you now, since you know time has been passed, what is maybe your stance now on the whole situation that went down between you and Katie? Have you guys since spoken, oh. or I forget any- about her a lot. Um, ex- yeah, like have we spoken? Ah, no, like text here and there, but like mostly like about the show. Um, there has been no like real talk. Um, to be honest, like. I really don't care about her anymore. Like she showed me all I needed to know uh, before leading up to the show. Like we would go forever not speaking. And it was always me being like, hey, how are you checking in? You know, and it was a very one sided friendship. And that's just how she is. Like, you know, Katie will start talking to people right before a challenge is she knows she's going on the show. She'll start to like collect friends. And then after the show's done, she she's back with like her mom role and her wife role and whatever. Like I'm married, but like I make it a point to be with, like be a good friend to all my friends, no matter where they live in the country, like no matter what. And um, that's just the kind of person that I am. She's just not like that. And um, I just feel like I gave a lot more from day one in the friendship than she did. And I don't want her to be a part of my life anymore. And if I saw her again, cool. I just find her extremely uninteresting. And um, I don't think about her. (laughs) So would you say maybe the way they portrayed it? Because they tried to make it seem like you guys were attached at the hip. And this was like some crazy falling out. You would say that you would say leading up to the show, you guys weren't really talking right along as much anyway Uh -uh. she had only started really talking to me a lot whenever she found out that we were going to do the challenge together okay well yeah i had her on at the end of october early november Mm -hmm. so you got you guys filmed in february right uh yeah she she actually had said to me like the only way she would go is probably if you were going so i was even led to believe that maybe you guys were a lot closer Well, I said the only way that I would go is if she was going too. We were close, but like not, we were probably closer as far as like, if you never see people, who's your closest person that is on the show, you know? But to be honest, I talked to Arissa more than I talked to her before the show. Um, And uh, I mean, we talked leading up to it, but only after we found out like about the show. I don't know. I, I don't think Katie is like a bad person. I just think that she is not the friend like she she doesn't have the same idea of friendship as I do. And that's okay. Like that's just not my cup of tea. So is what you're saying is if you have a best friend, you expect your best friend to be your best friend, be, you know, there for you. A thousand percent loyal. And her version of best friend is here and there. Yeah, uh, I think that Katie is an opportunist. Like, best way to say it. I think she's an opportunist, and I think that she will take what she wants to benefit herself, and she really can doesn't care about, like, other people. And for me, yeah, I can be like, like that with people who are I don't consider friends on the show, but if I consider you a friend, you are in my wedding, you are in my house, like, you know my, my people, like, you are my ride-or-die friend, which is what I thought. She was, like, literally the only person I would consider that in, in like, all of Buna Murray. Um, that there was no way I would have put myself in before her, like to protect her. And, um, she, uh, she wouldn't have done the same for me. And then she was like really shady about some stuff. And like, I don't know, like, you know, it's weird. She, she all of a sudden 
I don't know. There was like a lot of things that went on before uh, the show and during it that I was just like, whoa. And when we were in quarantine too, I was just like, uh, do I know this person? Wow. Okay. What, what things in particular come to mind if you don't mind sharing? She was very much trying to like get in the mix of everyone and kind of like find out all the gossip. And then she was just telling me, she was just like, yeah, well, I like kiss ass to production all the time and like do all these things just so I can look good on TV. And then she asked me to mention a lot on camera about like how she was like this, this like uncool mom just so she can look like the, like the good mom. And she was just like, yeah, and you're the party girl. And I'm like, well, I mean, yeah, like I have fun, but so do you. So she like was trying to twist it before the show even aired to where she was like the goody two shoes mom and I was a party girl, which in fact is not uh, accurate because she is by, she is a party girl. She's chain smoking and drinking like the, like everyone else at the house. And it's just like, she was just trying to paint herself to be someone she's not and to kind of make other people look negative and it's not okay. So would you say this was underlying for a while and then it just took an environment like this to bring it out? Oh, God. I took care of her since day one. I mean, it's not and, – and I was happy to do that. But, like, whenever we lived in Los Angeles, that's just how it was. Um, now, I was – I will do that with all my friends. Like, if, if they need something, like, I'm there for them. And if I needed something, they're there for me. She actually did whenever I moved from Los Angeles – I lived with her. Hey, Bubs. <laughs> I lived with her for like a couple weeks in Kentucky because I didn't know like if I wanted to live, move back to New Orleans or what I wanted to do with my life. And she was there for me. But like that was the only time. But I still kind of felt like, I don't know. I felt like I deserved more loyalty than what I got. Mm hmm. And she didn't give it, and that's fine. And we fought about it, and, that, and that's okay because I never will ask for a single thing of her friendship or other ever again. I don't need anything from her. Yeah, and it it's almost like it takes like a setting like the challenge where you're kind of like on top of each other to really bring out some of the issues that haven't yeah. been fully addressed, you know? Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, I was glad that like now she knows how I feel. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's funny. Like, somebody will be like, oh, blah, 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 and Katie. And I'm like, Katie who? And I'm like, oh, Katie Doyle. Yeah, Katie Doyle. But, again, Katie Doyle, I think of her still as, like, the old Katie. Like, whenever yeah. we were, like, in our early 20s when we used to have fun. And it's like whenever you're that young and you're living in L.A. and you're, like, sharing an apartment, everything's fun. But you don't have, like you kind of don't really need each other as much because you're just living this like crazy life. Right. Yeah. And I was kind of mind boggling how you and her weren't at the reunion and there's everybody else. It seems like they're speaking on your guys dynamic. And I'm like, what? And the same thing with Kendall was arguably like the most. I know. I know. There. I was like, are we really normalizing, you know, people not being main people not being at reunions and having other people talk about them like i just don't like that how they i'm sorry but beth she was there right yeah she was why there. was beth there who gives a crap what did beth have to do with anything in the situation like this is so weird i'm just like okay and none of these people knew about what the real and you still don't even know about the real root of like katie and i's fight and I will not share that because I don't think it'll make either one of us look great. So, um, but yeah, people are speaking at, like about us and they didn't even know the real story. And it had nothing to do with Arissa, P.S. Like, it's so funny whenever they were like, oh, because Trishel really wanted Arissa and Katie didn't say her name. I never, ever in a million years. In fact, I said the opposite. I said, I don't want Arissa to go against Arissa. It's just, yeah, that actually made me more mad than anything. So were you not invited to, re to the reunion? Yeah, I was not asked to go. And, and I know that Katie wasn't asked because she had told me that if she was asked, she wanted to go. Wow. So, and I'm sure, and I know for a fact, Kendall would have went because Kendall wants to be on TV so bad. So, like, she would have went for sure. And so, I don't know. Um, it just was weird that Kendall wasn't there. And, yeah, I guess me and Katie, too. Ooh. Is your relationship cool with Kendall? Um, like, yeah, she's she's fine. There's just some people that I just kind of don't 
think are like very interesting. Like I wouldn't just call them to say hi and like talk to like she's she's whatever. Mm-hmm. Like she was interesting in the house, like odd. Yeah. I was surprised that prior to the elimination with you guys, they didn't try sneaking in a quick reference of both of you guys having a past with the Miz. I just got to put that. Oh out there. God. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad they didn't. <laughs> and I love the Miz. He's great. He's great. Um, but yeah, that, that would have been funny. Um, no, Kendall's great. She's a really strong competitor. Um, I really respect her athleticism. I think she is, a good mom. Um, yeah, but I do, we just don't have a lot in common. Uh, do you think that they should put a put an end to like not having people at reunions that should be there? You know, like I don't. I just it just doesn't sit right. And I know a lot of people can agree with me on like having other people talk about cast members who aren't their situations. Like that just seems like weird to me. They literally could have had people Zoom call in or Skype yeah. in or whatever. They could have had that, and they didn't. And I thought it was just so strange that they just, like, made up the story about why Katie and I got into an argument, and then that was, like, the story. And so, it, yeah, it's, it's strange. Uh, Big Easy was there. Like. Oh, he was? Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, that's cr- Like, yeah, why was he there? I, I don't get it. I don't know. I Beth, think, Beth, for sure. I'm like, why was she there? She literally had no one cares about you, Beth. Bye. <laughs> why are uh, you there? You're not cool. <laughs> it's not that I'm not cool. They're just like, I, I just, she just didn't need to be there, deserve to be there. I mean, she just like is very dramatic for the cameras, overly dramatic, like very bad acting. It's just, um, yeah, maybe that's what they wanted. Maybe they just wanted that. Hey, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the tea on the real world homecoming reunion with you guys? Like, cause Bryn kind of dropped the, uh, I guess you could say bomb as to what's holding it up. But is there anything that you're willing to share as far as that goes? Uh, what did Bryn say? <laughs> she said that you guys I mean, I talked to her, but like, I don't know what she told you. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said that you guys have one holdout. Yes. And she, she kind of made it seem like it was Frank, but then <laughs> Arissa's one tweet the other or a couple weeks ago made it seem like there was more than one. I talked to everyone except for Alton. Actually, I don't even know if I have Alton's phone number, which is insane because we are we are cool with each other. I'm like, why don't I have his phone number? I have to literally text. A, Hasella if I want to talk to him but um anyway so uh, everyone as far as I know is is wanting to do it except for one person um but I don't think that they need that one person I think that they can do it without um so I don't know we'll see um I think that it would be really interesting I think so I know that they were actually going to do um they were in talks maybe to do Beth's season. Oh, that's what they are doing. That's the next oh, one. Oh, they are? Yeah. Yeah. Is everyone signed on to that? Like, even Tammy? Tam- yeah, Tammy is on it. They got one person. I don't want to mix up. An- it's a guy that's not going. I don't know if it's... Oh. it's the- I, don't, I don't know if... The- I don't want to mess up the name. It might be some guy named Aaron, maybe, that's not going. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 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 And then Dominic's going to make, like, a sporadic appearance. Oh, I loved it. But you know what? Best season was like my favorite. I love their really? season. I actually rewatched their season like not too long ago. And I was just like, God, they're so good. But that's why Beth is good for TV. I don't think she should have been at the reunion still. But she's great for television because she's so over the top. Yeah. <laughs> and I, li- I like to watch it. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. But um, it was really fun chatting with you today. And I uh, thank you again for hopping oh, on. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'll let you know when uh, this is out. Oh, thank you so much. All right, have a good uh, rest of your weekend. All right, you too. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.